Now, jumping in first, I'm going to go with a deep one. The reason being because this was the thing that completely changed my world around. Um, I don't know if a lot of you know this. Years ago, I was a high-performing gymnast. I did this from a very young age, and I grew up chasing what was my goal. I fell out of love with my goal, and I lost myself. I completely lost myself chasing goals that weren't for me. Now, what I didn't realize is how this stemmed over and crossed over into um, life as a whole. So what happens when I came away from performing as a high-level gymnast, I then moved into the fitness industry. I then started doing the same patterns again, chasing goals that weren't for me, they were for other people. And effectively, what I'd done was through my young years is I'd become a complete stranger. I'd become a complete stranger to myself. I didn't really know what it was that I wanted. I didn't know what my own purpose was. I didn't know what my end result was, which is a huge thing here. And I'd spent a lot of years as a stranger, going after things that weren't necessarily for me, didn't really light me up, if I'm, if I'm being brutally honest, and effectively drove me into a little bit of a hole. And something that I really wanna speak about here is how well do you know yourself? How really well do you know yourself? Because the majority of the time when I'm at speaking gigs or when I'm running masterminds or X, Y, Z, you name it, I really, really do find that the, the biggest piece of the puzzle which needs to be laid down first is us. How well do we know the relationship with ourselves? How well do we know what really fires us up? How well do we know our own purpose? Like, why are we here? We've, we, we've got a, an opportunity at life. What, what do we want out of it? You know what I mean? Like, what are the end results that we want to go after? What do we see ourselves in, in those core four areas of life towards the end of our lives, which are all things, health, wellness, emotional health, spiritual health, X, Y, Z, you name it as area number one, area number two, all things love, spouse, family, social circles, all things area number three, finances, career, um, and then all things number four, which is life, adventure, and growth. But only when we know who we are, what lights us up, what we're here to do, what that end result is, then we can start creating the paths and guiding our way through life. And again, flipping it back to my own story here is when I really had that harsh realization when I pretty much burned a lot of things to the floor and I was like, no, I'm the problem in every single area here is because I don't know what it is that I truly want. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what that end result is. Then we can start laying down the other pieces of the jigsaw. And I always think that those are the questions that create the outlines of the jigsaw. So then you can start filling in the rest of the picture. So my point number one here and foundation number one here from, again, my own <laughs> life story is don't go through life being a stranger to yourself. First things first, you've got to really get clear on who you are and what you want as your end result. And a lot of the time I find that sometimes people really are quite distant and they really struggle to find the answers to those questions. And sometimes just asking the question is the first biggest step to uncovering the rest of the piece of the puzzle. Now, earlier in the show, we did a, a segment called The Golden Buddha. And I really think that that's a big episode for a lot of people to go back and listen to because it really does explain that. But you can always start finding pieces or the little red flags that will guide you back home. And that's point number one and foundation number one, because if those questions aren't in check, what is this to you? What does this give you? What value does this add to your life? What are you moving towards? What are the end result? You're then gonna be running your year and it's not gonna be for you. And that's something that I really wanna drive home and enforce within this episode before we move into the next part. <laughs> Foundation number two, this last one that I mentioned was a perfect segue into this one, which is know the end result. Um, this is a real big thing because a lot of the time we get hit home, we see on social media, we see it in all of the self-development books is have goals, really, really have goals. And I see a lot of the time, I've done this myself, we set goals, but then we grow away from our goals. Our goals don't become ours, our goals no longer serve us, but yet still, we still go after that goal. Now, I mentioned before again about know the end result because knowing the end result is the core thing to know here because what happens is the result will stay the same but everything else might change. 
But as long as you're still guiding towards that true north, I think that's the biggest thing to really nail down. What really are your end results? Know them because therefore everything else can guide towards it. A lot of the time, this is one of the biggest lessons I've realized in business is you know the end result of what you want to happen within it or the cause or the purpose of the business, but sometimes the model, sometimes the systems, sometimes the dynamic, sometimes the way to get there will change and it will have to adapt. But you'll only know these things, and again, this is gonna be a perfect segue into the next tip, you'll only know these things when you actually set out on that course and start taking the action. But as long as you know the end result, you know the end destination, then the winds and the tides can change to get you there. Foundation number three. Now this one is a powerhouse one because this is what creates the results. <laughs> and this is all about closing this one gap. If you can learn the skill to close this gap as quick as possible, I can assure you it'll be one of the, the best skills you pick up this year, which is close the gap between intention and an action. So as soon as you know what you need to do, and this could be even lads <laughs> going speaking to the girl at the bar, it could be knowing what action to take as in, I need to create the system immediately getting into it. As soon as you know the intended action that needs to happen, it's then how fast can you take the action in order to make it happen? The reason being, as soon as you're in that gap from intention to action, what then starts to happen is procrastination. Ideas start to come in, distractions start to come in, other projects will start to come in, and effectively that one action to take that project forwards will become delayed, or it just won't happen. So one of the biggest things I really wanna kinda of drive home as a foundation for this episode is really, really hone in. As soon as you get that intention for action, take it. Start stepping into it and really close that gap down as quick as you can. I can assure you it's action what makes stuff happen. And also, actually, whilst we're on the topic of action, a lot of the time last year, I noticed there was a huge elevation with the whole law of attraction. Now, I just want to drive home this one thing. We can sit and think about results all day long. We can sit and I think it's great that we can sit and get that into our subconscious, into our thought process, into our conscious brain. But really when we do think about it, it is action what creates those things to happen. So the law of attraction is a great way of getting things into your thought process. However, it is action what creates them. And actually now that I'm saying this and thinking about it, when we do say law of attraction, what is the last part of the word attraction? It is action. <laughs> so there we go. The word is in there as it is. So foundation number three, close the gap between intention and action. So moving into the next foundation, or fundamental, however we want to look at this, um, we see online around the power of your environments, or more to the point, your social environments, which I feel is a big one. We've touched around this a lot of times on this show. But something that we never touch upon is the power of the social circle that doesn't allow you to settle or accept you at where you are currently at. Now, a lot of the time, it's great that we have the support, but do we have the people that call us out when we're settling? If there's one person who you can go to who can hold you accountable or a group of people where you know that whatever you speak about, where it is that you want to go, what your new standards are, what your new boundaries are, what it is that you said you were going to do, the people that will call you out and not allow you to settle all go stale are the ones that will really, really change your game. If you've got someone who will sit you down and say, hey, look, at the beginning of the year, you told me about all of these dreams and ambitions that you're going to go out and do. I believe in you. However, I've just seen the actions that you've been doing over the past week or two, and I really don't feel that's in alignment with where it is that you want to go. If you can create this social environment that's not just supporting you, keeping you accountable, but more to the point, calling you out when you're not in line with where it is that you said you were going to go, that's the thing that will really, really change a game. Because it's all well and true having people cheer for you and believe in you, 
But having the ones that will stand and have the courage to say, I don't think what you're doing right now is actually going to get you there. That's sometimes the biggest driving force that you can have within your social environments. So again, really creating the social environment that is going to drive you forwards is a real powerful one. I think a lot of the time we speak around it in a manner which is um, lose the negativity and all, all that sort of stuff and make sure you've got people around you that believe and support in you. But sometimes it's just having that one person or a couple of people or a group of people that will really keep you in line with what you said you were going to do, which can be the biggest game changer. So my point here and my fundamental is ensure there's a person, people around you who won't let you settle, who won't let you go stale and will ensure or give you that push or maybe it could be that little bit of belief when you sometimes have lost the belief in yourself, just that little nudge to drive you back into the alignment of what you said it is that you were gonna do. That can be a huge game changer. And I know in the past, and for me, that's been one of the biggest game changers for myself. So then going into the fifth and final fundamental or foundation for your 2020 or to absolutely dominate and crush this next period or this next chapter of your life, it is learning to be okay with imperfect and understanding that imperfect action is the best way or the only way to get the perfect result. Think about this. So just as a child, just as you when you were younger, we're learning to walk. What happened? We have to get good at stumbling. So we learn to take the action. We stand, we fall. Second time, we stand, we stand for a little bit longer, then we fall. The next time, we stand a little bit longer, and then we fall. And then over the duration of a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, months, X, Y, Z, we're then in a position where we can stumble, take a couple of steps and fall. Then we can stumble until over that process, we have learned to walk. The whole process of learning to do something new is an act of stumbling. We've got to realize that every time within action, we will stumble, but it is the stumbles where we get the quantum feedback, the core feedback, the core data, what worked for us and what didn't. And when we are working towards something in life, in business, it is these stumbling processes which give us the feedback as to this action worked, this action didn't work and it allows us to narrow down on what it is that we're doing. Now, we're in a period of time now where perfect initial action seems to be the thing that we wait for and we'll be forever waiting because it will never happen. The process requires the stumble. So this little crux is the big crux. Don't wait for the perfect action. Don't wait for something to look a perfect way. Don't wait for the perfect moment. Go and stumble. This is the unique thing that I love about achieving results, achieving actions, getting something, going after something. It always requires a stumbly start. Think about this in any area, be it dating, be it business, <laughs> be it life, be it going on an adventure, be it whatever. It always requires a stumbly start. You work out which bits worked, which bits didn't, and it allows you to take another step forward once you've got that feedback. So don't allow yourself to procrastinate, wait, lose time and lose life waiting for something to be perfect because it will never be. But be okay with imperfect and be okay with stumbling because it's fun <laughs> and fall in love with it fall in love with that process of stumbling your way perfect